Chapter 13, Playing Colonial Mary Chatter spilled out of the Houston sisters' bedroom in the elegant brick house on Milk Street. Everyone was excited to have exotic new British house guests. Petticoats, ribbons, and lace shawls flew about as the Houston girls dressed for dinner. The twins and Katie shivered before a small fireplace in the next room as they washed up in a basin of cold water. Katie, Lily whispered, you've got to play a game with us while we're here. What kind of game, Katie whispered back. I like games. We are all going to pretend that we're old-fashioned people like the Hewsons, continued Lily. Do you think you can act colonial? Katie nodded happily. Good, said Lily, because if you tell them that we're from the future, they'll think we're witches. And you know what happened to people who were convicted of witchcraft in Salem, don't you? Katie's eyes grew round. No, what happened? Emma gave Katie a sharp stare. They did horrible things to them. You don't even want to know. Katie gulped. So we have to try and fit in here, okay? Okay, Katie agreed. But pretending to be from the 18th century was not so easy. When they walked into the Hewitt's girls' bedroom, Katie spotted the handle of a flowered ceramic bowl sticking out from under the bed. Look at that pretty bowl, Katie said, sliding it toward her. The Houston girls watched in horror. Ew, it smells bad, said Katie, making a face. It looks like someone... Lily clapped her hand over Katie's mouth as Mercy quickly pushed the object farther under the bed with her foot. "'What is that bowl for, anyway?' Katie continued, bending down to take another look. Lily grabbed her arm and pulled her back. "'Tis a chamber pot, of course,' Mercy answered, blushing. "'They used it at night as a toilet,' Lily whispered in Katie's ear. "'And we'll have to use it, too. Bathrooms haven't been invented yet.' "'Why do you act so strangely?' Patience asked." You don't seem at all like the English girls we know, Faith added. That's because, Lily hesitated. Because we have spent a lot of time out of England, she said truthfully. The Houston girls chatted on excitedly about their strange guests who didn't know what a chamber pot was. Mother told us to find you each a dress for supper, Faith said as she opened a tall wooden wardrobe and took out a satin dress. I thought you would fancy this gown, for it matches your lovely blue eye, she declared, holding it out for Emma to try on. Emma was delighted to wear a real colonial gown. She wriggled out of her mother's old bridesmaid's dress, and the twins watched as the Houston girls stared in amazement at Emma's underwear. "'What's wrong?' Emma asked, seeing the incredulous looks on their faces. "'What is that strange linen you're wearing?' Patience spoke up. "'And who painted those little hearts all over the mass charity?' "'It's just normal underwear,' Emma told her, covering herself up with her dress. "'Underwear?' said Faith. "'What a funny word. What is it for?' "'Well, what do you wear under your clothes?' asked Emma. "'Nothing,' said Hope. "'Except for our stays and petticoats, of course,' Mercy answered. "'She handed a stiff corset to Emma. "'You can borrow these stays while you're here.' "'She and Hope wrapped the cotton corset fitted with strips of whalebone around Emma's waist. "'She gave the strings a sharp tug from behind. "'Emma gasped. "'I can't breathe!' "'She held onto a nearby chair to keep from falling over.' But when the girls slipped the dress over Emma's head, she couldn't help but marvel at how tiny her waist had become and how straight and erect she was suddenly standing. You should see the dress that Mama is wearing to the ball at Mrs. Loring's house on Saturday, Hope bragged. She had it made special for the occasion. The silk came on one of Papa's ships last spring. Lily looked surprised. Your parents are going to a ball? But there's a war on. Hope nodded. Papa says the soldiers need entertaining now more than ever to keep their spirits up. They say that Mrs. Loring has hired the best harpsichord player in the colony to, pe to play for them. And they will have the most lovely cakes and sweets, said Patience. The general and all of his officers will be there, added Faith. And everyone knows how much the general loves to dance, Hope said, spinning around the room. Do you mean General George Washington will be there, Emma asked? The girls looked surprised by the question, but then started to giggle. "'Emma, you are so witty. I nearly mistook your joke for seriousness,' Mercy laughed. "'Of course we'd all love to see General Washington dancing at the ball. "'Dancing and leg irons, that is.' "'The Houston girls fell into peals of laughter at Mercy's joke, "'while panic began to rise in Lily and Emma. "'The Houston girls were making fun of George Washington. "'The Houstons were a loyalist family.' "'You must tell us all about England,' Faith insisted. "'Yes, what kind of birds do you have there?' little Charity asked." Oh, who gives a fig about birds, Hope chided. I'd rather hear about the Earl of Exit Essex House. Is it very grand? Oh, yes. Do tell us about your house back in Essex, pleaded Patience. Our house, the twins squeaked in unison. 
Oh, they have the biggest and best house in the whole neighborhood, Katie chimed in with delight. It's right on the lake. They have a flat screen TV and two bathrooms. They have ping pong and a swing in the playroom and... Lily pinched Katie hard. Ouch, squealed Katie. Pray tell us, Katie coaxed Charity. What is a flat screen TV? And what is a bathroom, asked Faith. Oh, Katie makes up words all the time. Doesn't she, Lily? Emma giggled nervously. All the time, agreed Lily, rolling her eyes. She loves to make things up. As the girls' conversation dodged in and out of dangerous territory, Mistress Hewson sailed into the room with a great swoosh of her many silk skirts and a cloud of spicy scents. Her everyday wig had been replaced by another taller model that had a mountain of white curls heavily powdered and perfumed with cinnamon and cloves. Katie coughed. "'Well, well, just look at you,' Mrs. Hewson cried, clapping her hands. "'What a difference a ball of soap, some water, and a fine frock can make. There's certainly no mistaking your pedigree now.' The twins stared hard at Mr. Hewson, now that they knew she was a Tory. They no longer felt quite as safe and protected as they had moments ago. Katie, Mrs. Hewson cooed, you must stay off your bad foot for a few days. Charity and patience, you may stay up here and keep her company. I'll have a tray of food sent up for you three. Oh, yes, Patience said, clapping her hands. Mama, Mama, Charity cried out. Katie told us all about their house. Tis on a lake with a ping pong TV and a flat screen bathroom. Lily and Emma braced themselves for the questions that were sure to follow, but luckily Mistress Hewson wasn't paying much attention to her youngest daughter. Yes, yes, my pet, she gently scolded. What did I tell you about chattering on so? A fine lady knows how to keep still. Startled, the twins looked with longing at Mistress Hewson on hearing her call her daughter my pet for it was the same expression their own mother so often used when speaking to them. She may have been a Tory, but she acted like any other mother. "'I've written a letter to your father in England,' Mr. Houston informed the twins. "'We will anxiously await his reply.' The girl stopped cold at this news. "'Of course, in good times it would take only four months to reach us, but with the harbour as restricted as it is, well, it could take much longer,' Mr. Houston continued. The twins exhaled. Of course, telephones and email were centuries away. It could take months rather than minutes to reach someone across the ocean. Until then, Mr. Schuston went on, I hope you'll accept our hospitality and think of us as your family here in the colonies. Tis lucky you found yourselves a good Tory family to look after you. Then on seeing their troubled faces, Mr. Schuston added, There, there, my dears, you needn't worry. Those ruffian rebels and their revolution will soon be put down, and order shall be restored to his majesty's colonies. You'll see. Lily didn't need to speak to her twin to know exactly what she was thinking. They were staying with loyalists, and they had to find Matt and the boys right away. But first, they had to make it through dinner with the enemy. Chapter 14. Supper, Tongue, and Saved by the Pox Lily and Emma slowly followed the Hewsons down to the dining room. "'What if they ask us more questions about Essex?' Emma whispered fearfully. "'We just have to figure it out as we go along,' Lily told her, "'and hope they've never been there themselves. "'Hurry now, girls,' Mr. Hewson called to them, "'for I've asked our neighbor, Mr. Streep, to join us. "'She can't wait to meet you. "'She's from Essex, too.' "'Lily and Emma felt the blood drain from their faces "'as they followed their hostess to the table. "'The Hewson's house, though uncomfortably chilly, "'was elegantly furnished.' Brightly embroidered tapestries hung on the wood-paneled walls, while crystal glasses and silver serving dishes sparkled in the candlelight. But in spite of the fine furnishings, there was a strong fishy odor that hung in the air. No one seemed fazed by the smell or the cold. Mistress Hewson and her husband sat at opposite ends of a long mahogany table. The twins and the Hewson's three eldest daughters were seated on one side. On the other side sat an older woman with a beaky bird-like face and a tall white wig that swirled like a dollop of meringue atop her head. A young butler with a wig that was twice the size of his head stood at attention before the sideboard. "'It pleases me greatly to introduce you to my husband, Master Hewson, and our good neighbor, Mr. Street,' Mr. Hewson gushed. "'I'm most pleased to present the daughters of the Earl of Essex, Lily and Emma Capel.' Mr. Streep eyed the twins before tipping her meringue-topped head in a greeting. Her eyes rested on the twins' glittering earrings. Master Hewson rose from his seat and bowed politely. He was short and stocky. And like Lily and Emma's own father, he had kind eyes and a ready smile. But unlike Mr. Capel, who loved to wear his baseball cap and sweatpants, Master Hewson wore a white pigtailed wig, a blue velvet waistcoat, and matching trousers that stopped at his knees. 
He wore white cotton stockings and black shoes with silver buckles. The twins sat down at the table, and everyone bowed their heads as Master Hewson said grace. When he finished his prayer, the young butler approached Lily. Seeing that, wig, seeing that his wig was on crooked, Mistress Hewson glared at him and coughed loudly until he straightened it. "'Madeira, miss?' he asked, holding a carafe of wine on a tray. "'What's that?' asked Emma. "'Tis Portuguese wine, of course, miss,' the butler replied. "'Oh, no thank you,' Emma told him. "'I'm only ten, but I'll have a Coke.' Lily kicked her twin under the table, and Emma sat bolt upright. "'We'll just have water, please,' Lily corrected her sister. "'Water?' repeated Mr. Susan. "'Why, well, tis such a poor thin fluid with no substance. "'I've never known anyone here in the colonies to drink it at the table.' "'I'm sure we never drank it in Essex either,' Mr. Streep added with a sharp look. Lily's heart raced, realizing the mistake she had made. What else would they get wrong? "'You must excuse our meagre table,' Mr. Susan apologized, seeing her young guest's uncomfortable look. "'With the war on, our cook is hard-pressed to find a leg of mutton or a joint of beef. I'm afraid we've only cod, grateful pudding, and tongue to offer you tonight.' Emma frowned at the sight of the meat on her plate. How could anyone eat tongue? Lily tried a spoonful of the pudding and was glad to find that it tasted very much like the sweet creamy cord pudding her grandmother often made. With the colonies in such turmoil, our dinners have suffered greatly. There are so many shortages, but I must say, your house tonight is one of the brightest lit on the street, Mr. Streep said approvingly. Mother saves our spermaceti now for special occasions, added Mercy. Spermaceti, Emma repeated. Yes, tis the oil made from the sperm whale. "'Everyone knows that,' said Faith. "'That explained the room's fishy smell. "'But Mr. Street began to stare strangely at the girls. "'Surely you must burn spermaceti in your lamps back home in Essex.' "'Oh, yes, of course,' Lily replied, her mouth full of pudding. "'We burn whale oil all the time.' "'She scratched an itch on the tip of her nose. "'Mr. Streep's left eyebrow shot up, "'and the Houston girls looked equally shocked by Lily's unladylike gesture.' "'About your journey,' Master Hewson broke in. "'With the harbor so restricted, I am surprised you were able to make it to shore at all.' "'Well, we sort of came in the back way,' Lily replied, "'trying to look away from the untouched tongue on her plate.' "'Mr. Streep gave the tongues a sideways glance. "'I am sorry to say I am not acquainted with your family.' "'Lily lowered her eyes and nervously ate another spoonful of her pudding. "'But tell me how it is that you young ladies have come to travel so far without an escort,' asked Master Hewson.' Lily took a deep breath. "'What I'm going to tell you is the truth,' she began. Master Hewson nodded. "'Always a wise choice.' "'The truth is, we weren't supposed to get into the boat at all,' Lily admitted. "'You mean to say your parents don't know your, of your whereabouts?' Master Hewson exclaimed. "'They have no idea that you are here in the colonies?' "'They don't have a clue,' Lily sighed. "'I wish they were here with us right now,' Emma said, her lip trembling." They're so far away, so very far. Oh, my stars, you poor lambs, Mr. Hewson ran over and hugged them both. I can only imagine how you must miss your dear mother. The twins burst into tears. Perhaps Papa could play a song to cheer our guests, Hope suggested. I should be happy to, her father said. He was about to reach into his waistcoat pocket for the penny whistle he always kept there when his wife's stern look stopped him cold. "'Play music at the table!' she exclaimed. "'Why, Master Hewson, whatever has come over you? "'I'm quite sure our guests would find such a display most impolite.' "'She smiled nervously at the twins. "'You must forgive my husband. "'His fondness for music can be quite unreasonable at times.' "'She proceeded to fill the awkward silence that followed "'with her own chatter about the oncoming ball "'and many fine people who would be attending.' The candles were nearly melted down to their candlesticks when Mistress Hewson excused her daughter from the table. "'Go on up and entertain poor little Katie. "'I do hope her ankle heals quickly. "'And check on the baby as well,' she said. "'We'll go with you,' Lily and Emma offered as they scrambled to get away from Mr. Streep. "'But you've hardly touched your food, Mistress Hewson objected, guiding them back to their seats. "'I'm afraid we've kept you both talking so much you haven't had time to eat. "'Please do say and finish your meal.' "'Yes, please, do stay,' Mr. Streep replied with a sharp glint in her eye. "'Tis not often we get to dine with such esteemed company.' She drew out the words, esteemed company, so long that Lily's heart skipped a beat. As they watched the Houston girls leave the table, the twins knew there was only one way out of the dining room. They would have to eat the tongue. 
Your accent is most unusual, Mr. Streep remarked, staring straight at them. I must say, in all my years in England, I have never heard such an accent as you girls have. Then she looked through the corner of her eye. In these dangerous times, there are so many impostors going about looking to steal the very linen off your beds. Why, you just can't be too sure. Of course, that kind of riffraff will end up at the whipping post. They always do. Lily almost choked on her mouthful of tongue. The fork slipped from Emma's trembling fingers, hitting her plate with a loud clatter. All eyes on them when Mercy rushed back into the dining room. Oh, Mama, Mercy cried. Do come quick. Tis patience. Her face is flushed and she's burning up with fever. Mistress Hewson flew from her seat and followed Mercy out of the room. Meanwhile, Mistress Streep covered her nose and mouth with her napkin. "'Fever? In this house?' she exclaimed. "'Good God, boy, don't just stand there!' she screamed at the butler, who had backed away from the table. "'Go and tell my driver to bring up my carriage at once!' "'I beg you to remain calm, my dear Mr. Street,' Master Hewson said, getting to his feet. "'Calm! Only a fool would stay calm with Pox in his house!' she shrieked, hurrying for the door. Master Hewson looked at the twins and smiled a tight smile. "'Silly woman, jumping to conclusions,' he said. But Lily could see that his eyes weren't smiling. His eyes were not smiling at all.